Somehow we are here. Episode number 50 of Park to Prem. How has it been 50 episodes already? It's actually 51 if you include the job searching episode. Forgot about that yesterday. We're back here today. Double header. Bristol Rovers at home. I know we've played them before, but they are currently directly behind us in third. And then after that, an away game against Sheffield Wednesday. Right now we sit in second. By the end of today's episode, we could be clinging on to a playoff spot. Some big games today. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to the Brandon Charles Show. We're here for more Park to Prem action. I hope you guys are doing amazing. I just want to start this episode off by saying a massive thank you for the support on this video. I did tweet out about this recently, but as we sit here right now, Park to Prem episodes daily are getting more than double the views they were last year in the first 24 hours. In fact, it's almost three times more. That is mind blowing. If you are one of the new recruits, hope you've been enjoying the adventure. Welcome aboard. Today's a big one. Now, of course, last episode we had Cambridge United where we drew 2-2 and then Bromley where we lost 4-3. Two annoying results, but when I looked ahead, with the exception of the Tranmere Rovers game, there were winnable games here. And the good news is, for the most part, we have actually managed to win these. The first, 5-2 against Northampton, Brandon Charles got a hat-trick. It really is a case this year a lot of the time of, if Brandon Charles scores or assists, we win. If he doesn't turn up we lose. So we just need him to keep turning up. Now, like I said a moment ago, this game here against Tranmere was a pivotal one for us. Tranmere are running away at the top of the table. Unfortunately, they are still kind of out of reach at the moment. This game here, not a classic, but we, we won 1-0. The goal scorer, a somewhat unlikely one as well. Kelly from centre mid getting the goal. Uh, Panny laid it inside to him and for some reason he decided to shoot, but it went in. So I'm not mad. If he had missed that, I would have been upset. After that, we progressed in the Papa John's Trophy on penalties against Norwich's under-21s. It was a weird game, but yeah, we scraped through. Unfortunately, you might have noticed it here. We'll talk about it. Now, one defeat since we last year. It was in the Papa John's Trophy quarterfinal to Portsmouth. I did think about coming back and doing this game, but we've played Portsmouth in loads of cup competitions before. It didn't feel really that special and we lost anyway, so maybe it was a bullet dodged. And well, in our three most recent league games, we've not exactly been convincing. A 2-2 draw against Leighton Orient, followed up by a 6-2 win against Mansfield Town. That one was convincing, but it is the kind of game we should be winning. And then most recently, away against Rochdale, they scored in the 92nd minute. The good news is, despite our somewhat iffy form, we are still in the automatic promotion spots, largely down to the fact that both Rotherham and Sheffield Wednesday have been struggling. Bristol Rovers had a load of games in hand. They've played them. Unfortunately for us, they've started to win them. And well, with our lackluster form and teams in the playoffs performing well, you can see, despite the fact we're in second, we're not that safe anymore. There was a point last episode where I said, we've got a gap to the team in fifth. That The gap's gone. Now, it is worth noting, a couple of things have happened since you were last here. The training facilities, we spent £750,000 for it to go up by half a star. Doesn't feel worth it. And the other little bit of news, outside the transfer window, we are now affiliated with Man City. Now, unfortunately, this started on the 21st of January and all the good players I could have loaned, they'd already sorted out loans for. But going into next year, having an affiliation with Pep Guardiola's Man City, yeah, Pep is still at the club, despite the fact they finish second, well, every year, it looks like. Although they are winning the Premier League this year. Uh, at the moment, uh, is close. But anyway, I digress. Could be a really good affiliate for us. We'll find out more, I think, next summer. Now, if you're a league line viewer, you might have noticed the overall balance is in a rather healthy position and that is because of some decision making I made. I looked at the team, I looked at where we were in the league and I decided in January I was going to go for it. I was going to add a few more players to try and secure the automatic promotion spots because I feel like we're in such a good position we have to try and make it happen this year if we can. So in order to make that happen we did have to make some sales. Our Conte, we knew he was leaving £100,000 for this man. I'm pretty happy with. James Connolly's move to TNS has also officially gone through. That was another £110,000. Tanner Jones departed the club for £20,000 in January. He was a useful squad player, but this year he's just been sat in the youth team collecting dust. L little bit of money for him. I mean, technically, it is profit. 
Morgan Williams left the club for nothing. Uh, he was just unhappy. He wasn't playing football for us. Decided to let him go. Uh, I mean, the scouts think he's a D-rated player, so probably for the best. And finally, the sale of real note in this window. Ryan McGuinness, long-term right-back, this year backup right-back, was not happy about it, had been kicking up a fuss. So when we got an offer of a quarter of a million pounds... I kind of just had to take it. But with this money, we've put some of it into the bank balance. We've put some of it into upgrading the squad. And I think we've made four new signings in January. So let's talk about those transfers in. The first of which is Calvin White. I needed a right back. McGuinness was leaving us. Now, bear in mind, McGuinness here in blue was sold for £250,000. We got Calvin White in green for £39,000. Now, I will say he's not played very well for us so far, but I still feel like this has the potential to be a good deal. He is only 18. He's got a lot of potential. Now, let's be real. It's no secret. Callum Williams, not been happy with the left back this year. I went out and I looked for a left back and I think I found one. Owen Beck, this man, 27 years old, another Welshman, had previously been playing for Burton Albion. You can see they bought him for £300,000 a few years ago. He had, as you can see here, been playing with Burton, who I believe were promoted last year. Indeed, they were. They're currently 11th in League One. But we've snapped this man up on a free transfer as a left back. If we just compare him with Williams, who's down here... I mean, the fact that the guy in blue is the highest earner at the club and Beck has joined us on half the wages, um, it's difficult to justify keeping Callum around. So with a right back and left back secured, I did cast my eyes higher up the pitch. And unfortunately for us, we got a couple of injuries in the striking area. I felt like we had to get someone in. So I went and got in the candle. Yes, Toby here. Toby the candle candlish. Um, this man is on loan from Inverness. Yeah, he's inconsistent. Yeah, he's very one-footed. He is very, very good though. Now, so far for us, four goals, two assists in three appearances. That looks really, really impressive until you realise that that all happened in a single game against Mansfield Town. He's been absent for a couple of games, but... I think he could be a really reliable goal scorer for us, and I'm hoping he's going to ease the burden off Brandon Charles a little bit. And the final of the new signings for £19,000 is George Urfey. Fantastic name, George Urfey. 25 years old. We have snapped this man up from Scunthorpe United. You can see here, had been rocking it out in the National League. Nine assists in 31. I don't think is too bad. He has joined us to be a bit of a creative outlet at centre mid. Now, obviously, during this year, we've been playing with an advanced playmaker and a centre mid on attack. But truth be told, Barry Kelly, with the exception of his moment of brilliance against Tranmere, has been rather mm, underwhelming, I think might be the nicest word to give to describe him. Obviously, he's 21 years old, loads of room to grow, but I did wonder how much of it was down to the player roles. So with Earthy joining us and adding more quality to the centre of the midfield, I've decided to make things mix things up slightly. Panny is going to continue to play as a centre mid on a tackle, though we've moved him on to the left-hand side, and then that is going to open up the opportunity for Earthy here to play as a Mazala, to play on his preferred right foot, because he is right-only footedness. But I'm quite keen to see how the centre mid on attack does with a Mazala. I think that could be a really good pairing. I will say, when you look at our transfer history this year, it does look a little bit mad. What I would point to is the fact that our net spend this year is actually a profit of £450,000. That is some really good money in the bank. When you consider the stadium work that we had done with more seats being put in, the training facility upgrades, the fact that we're sat here in League 2 with £350,000 in the bank really is a testament to some of the wheeling and dealing that we've been doing. That is going to be so critical at this level because we don't get the same attendances as teams in and around us. And if we can just continue to turn a profit with transfers, that's hopefully going to fund us onwards and upwards. And speaking of onwards and upwards, I think that brings us nicely to today's game. We are taking on Bristol Rovers at home. Of course, we did the game against them previously away. I think it finished 6-3. There were lots of goals in that one. Don't know if we can expect that again today. So a tiny bit of injury news today. Unfortunately, Paul Apaya is out injured. He's actually got a virus. I decided to send him home because he was out for three weeks with it. I didn't want that spreading through the team. What that does mean is that Rogers is going to come in and play at centre-back. You might have noticed it here. Beck is going to be starting out on the left-hand side, as well as the other two new recruits in January. Earthy playing as that right centre-mid. Today is his debut. Came through the doors a couple of days ago, and he's going to be thrown in straight at the deep end here. And 
And as you might have noticed, out on the right-hand side, Candlish, the candle, is going to be playing as our right forward in the front three. What that does mean is Brandon Charles is going to move over onto the left-hand side. You might remember that is where he played for us during the National League and he looked pretty good there. So he's the kind of player who I feel like can just play in either of the advanced forward roles. He's a right-footedness. The candle is right-only footedness. So with that in mind, that's the logic there. It's fair to say that we did add a number of new players in January, but like I said, I feel like this is a really great season to potentially get that automatic promotion. And I feel like with the few additions we've made, maybe that can just give us that little bit of extra oomph that we need to make the final push. We've now got through the most difficult point in the season where there are midweek games constantly, you're having to rotate things around a lot. And when I look at our overall quality, I feel like we're good enough for promotion, he says as Bristol Rovers head the ball against the crossbar. Throw in on this near side, it is Hall to Wilkes. I remember playing these guys pre previously because they had a guy called Hall and a guy called Hall, which I appreciate with my accent, just sounds like I'm saying the same name twice. I am saying them differently, I swear. It's just like a cruel prank. Anyway, they're playing the ball through the middle, which is the area of the team which I feel like should be its strongest. We've got some very good centre mids now. I look at Panny, I look at Earthy, maybe less so with Liam Stewart, but I do feel like at centre mid now, we actually have some really strong performers, he says as Earthy gives away the ball to Hugill, who's now bringing it forward. Men queuing up in the middle. We might need to do some defending here. Hull to Wilkes. They're just passing it around. And I mean, I remember saying last time we took them on, they play some nice football. They've moved the ball around there very well. Bristol Rovers were just toying with us here, weren't they? They were just giving me a little bit of hope that maybe we'd be able to get it away from danger. In the end, it was Briggs with the header into the bottom corner. And that is 1-0. I'm going to change something up here. I've noticed that they're playing with two defensive midfielders and no one really at centre attack in mid. With that in mind, I feel like Stewart is a little bit wasted. So I'm actually going to move Stewart forward. And th th this might be mad. I'm going to play Earthy as an attacking midfielder on attack. Stewart is going to play as a deep line playmaker on defend, and Panny is going to play at box to box. Have I lost the plot? Possibly. I feel like I look at their system, I look at the roles that they're playing, and I just feel like there is an opportunity there to really make the most. We're almost being too respectful playing with a deep line playmaker. Let's see if it can work out for us, as Brandon Charles is going to bring the ball forward. Of course, needs to get the ball on his right foot, ideally. Skips past his man. Lays it to Robbie Earth, whose shot was blocked. Half an opportunity for us, really. Maybe still a chance from the corner, though. Earthy is going to be stood over it. I feel like there is some pun involving Earthy that I can use here. If you've got any suggestions for next episode, please let me know. What is Earthy going to do? Stuart, Panny, hits it. Forces a save out award. I was starting to believe for a moment. Half an hour into this game, it has been very even. There's been just two shots on target for both teams. You've just seen ours from range. It wasn't the most convincing of efforts, but maybe a chance for us to make something happen here. Stewart to Panny. Back to McGrath, who is still one of the top performers in the league. The left centre-back, of course, signed for a record £120,000. Alongside Rodgers, you might have noticed, Rodgers had been dropped for a spell. He's been back in the team recently. And, well, the candle is going to lay it to Charlton. He's going to lay it to Panny. And I thought he was about to find the back of the net. My voice cracked. That's awkward. Maybe we're not done here just yet, though, because they are going to have a goal kick from the resulting... Oh, goal kick, which they're going to give away immediately. Panny making his way forward. What can he do here? He's going to cross it in. The keeper's dropped it, and George Earthy's there for what apparently is his fourth goal of the season, even though it's a goal on his debut. There's just not question, football manager. I can't help but feel like we've been gifted away back into this game. I mean, it's the two centre mids who have bigged up. Panny crosses it in, and then Ward drops it. I'm not going to complain. There is eight seconds left of the half and a highlight has begun. Does anyone like that? No one likes that. Maybe I will like it. We've got the ball. The candle gives it to Charles. One on one. You back him to score and he's at the post. And it's half time. Obviously, they scored early on. After that, they really haven't created a great deal. We've not created a ton either. But I do feel like we've been the better team at the end of this half. Jackson with a free kick. We're really early on in this half and... Well, everyone looks a little bit switched off. The ball's going to be played forward towards Wilkes in the wide area. Do not foul him. There's an area of the box in the football manager game in that corner where you just expect penalties to be given. Every game, the penalties are always fouls just at the byline. We've all seen it. We all know it. Earthy's through again. No way. Can he get his second? I don't know why he tried to chip the keeper. I kind of backed the audacity, but 
off target. I don't know about anyone else. I'm getting very excited about Earthy. Just just based off this game. He, he's looking very inspired, the new signings. Has already scored on his debut, albeit a gift. Scanlon now has the ball for them. Do not foul him. Not in that area. Although, don't let them cross the ball in like that uncontested. It's Scanlon again. It's always Scanlon. Have you guys noticed that? Bloody, bloody Scanlon. He's... It's... It's, it's 2-1. I feel like it was a different Scanlon last time. Scanlon's not a popular last name, is it? Am I missing something? I did just go and check. It's not the Scanlon from last episode. Realise I've just gone on about how it was always Scanlon. It was it was Conlon yesterday, wasn't it? Either way, an annoying goal to concede. We need to mentally reset here. There's still half an hour left in this game. They've got a free kick. They're probably going to score a free kick. And God, he looks confident, doesn't he? It's 3-1. It's 3-1. Oh, my. I hate Bristol Rovers so much. Okay, look. The sequence of unconventional changes is continuing. Stuart, the candle, and Robbie uh, coming off. We're going to move Brandon Charles into the middle. Play Smith out on the left-hand side, of course, on his stronger left foot. Has been out of favour as of late, but we need to see how he'll get on. Kelly is naturally a striker. Was naturally a striker before I decided he was a centre mid. We're going to see how he does up top. Elsewhere, AC has come in. I don't really want to play him as a box-to-box -box midfielder. We'll play him as a Mazala. I feel like that does play to his strengths. I mean, I'm looking at the team and I've got two further changes left, but I kind of just want to keep them in the back pocket. The players who I would normally take off in Panny and, well, the other centre mid, right now they're our best two players. You know what? Owen Beck, naturally a left wing back. Let's return him to his natural habitat. Beck, just, just have some fun on the left-hand side, mate. We need goals. Okay, Scanlon cutting in on the near side for them. Not Conlon, completely different players. Doesn't even sound similar. Kind of does, but I digress. They're kicking the ball forward. And Goy turns his man. And but for a fine save there by Carlton... This could have been embarrassing. AC with the ball. Lays it off to Panny, of course. Those two playing as the two centre mids. Plenty of men in the attack here. Kelly with the ball. Can he show a spark of creativity? He's going to give it to Panny, who can shoot from here. Does shoot from there. Goal number nine of the season. All of a sudden, it's 3-2. Really, really nice, by the way, to see Kelly getting involved here. At centre mid this year, he's played okay, but he's not been a massive shining light. And with Earthy coming into the team, he probably is going to be on the bench more. Maybe give me a little bit of food for thought on maybe playing him as a striker with an assist like that. And well, now he's over a free kick, which, I mean, it's just been saved by the keeper. Our goalkeeper doesn't save any free kicks. Their goalkeeper's saving that. Still have got the corner, though. Let's believe. Earthy going to cross it in. Rogers, the keeper, makes another save. He's looking to make amends, isn't he, after he dropped the ball earlier. At the moment, neither team really looks like they want to have the ball. Hall, inside to Lawrence, back with Smith. Bristol Rovers do knock the ball around noticeably nicely compared to all the other teams we've played in our division this year. Obviously, we've played them twice in live comms. The last one was 6-3. I didn't think we were going to match it for goals. It, it's now 4-2. Is it just me, or in Football Manager this year, do you see teams play this system a lot? I feel like the three centre-backs with two defensive mids and wing-backs is, ve is very prominent in Football Manager, and I suppose in real life it's become commonplace. It's very good, it feels like. As Bristol Rovers, nearly said City, are showing here, oh my word, Brandon Charles is at the woodwork again. I'll tell you what, the two shots he's had, if they go in, it's 4-4. Four, four. But, but, I mean, they've not gone in, so the point's completely mute. I mean, look at this. They're trying to take a goal kick, and we've just got six players pressing at this point. We want the ball back. We want to make something happen. We want to force them to go long. Unfortunately, in going attacking, we are leaving ourselves open at the back. Cool to Hugill. What can he do now? He's going to lay it back inside. Bristol Rovers in possession in our half. They'll be very, very happy with this. If we could win it, plenty of players to break away with. The ball played forward for McGrath to gobble up. Now with Rodgers, who's going to look to pick out Kelly who is never going to win a ball in the air like that. I'm not sure why we're booting it up to him, but who am I to question it? McGrath, bringing the ball out again. Let's go to Beck. He's going to go long. I'll tell you what, Kelly's there under it, not, not winning it again. Can we just kick the ball on the ground to Kelly? That's what we need more of. He's threaded through Smith. It's an incredible ball, and it's an incredible goal. I'm a bit scared it's offside. It is offside. I had this feeling, you just know, don't you, sometimes in Football Manager, it's all going too well. It was so nicely worked, even the finish was tasty, but it means nothing. 
Now, I know the scoreline is 4-2, and we're probably not going to come back here. I actually feel like we've been unlucky, which <laughs> I can't keep saying. It's the second time in a live con match in a row that I think we've lost 4-2. I'll take it back. We lost to Bromley 4-3 last time. We had the higher XG. I'm going to claim the moral victory. Doesn't change a thing, though. Bristol Rovers have now gone above us, and we are now tied on points of Sheffield Wednesday, who we play next weekend. That next game is away from home. It's against the biggest stadium in League 2. Kind of excited for this one. Take it on Sheffield Wednesday. If we lose this, when we're not in the automatic promotion spots. I mean, we still might not be when I come back because Rotherham have a game in hand. <sighs> I'm annoyed. So for game number two today, we are heading kind of up north. Would Sheffield be considered north? I wouldn't consider it north, given the fact I'm from Lincolnshire. But so uh, you know what? I shouldn't start a debate about what is north or south in England here, because no one is going to agree in the comments and it's going to be like World War Three. I didn't realise how far out of the centre of Sheffield Hillsborough was. It is actually a little way away, but I have found the stadium. Took longer than I want to admit. First things first. Um... That there's a river. I mean, I don't think we're going to lose footballs anytime soon, uh, given the fact that the stadium is quite big. It's not quite the problem we had at Maidenhead, is it? I mean, first things first, this is a very picturesque entrance to a stadium, isn't it? You've got the river here and then just the front door. I mean, this is, if you were designing a stadium like in Minecraft or something, it would look like this. The symmetry's on point. Thought I'd click on a photosphere in the stadium and see what the seating arrangement looked like. I'll be honest, I never realised that Sheffield was so sunny. This picture was probably taken on the sunniest day in Sheffield history. I'm going to say it. Never. I've been to Sheffield a lot, never been this sunny. Now, I will say this was done a little while ago, but shout out to Mike Bellwood, wherever you are, Mike, because you've gone around the entirety of the inside of the stadium and you can you can literally go on your own little adventure. I mean, can we go in the toilets? No, I am disappointed. My question is, who is Mike Bellwood? How did he get this access where we can just go on a tour of the whole of Hillsborough? Here we have the Wednesday Tap, I believe it's called. This was actually taken more recently. So, James Hargreaves, you, you have contributed to the project, my friend. If you've ever wondered what's in an executive box at Hillsborough, um, it, it, I'll be honest, it's a little bit underwhelming. If you're all sat in those seats, it is going to be comfy, isn't it? Good view of the pitch, though. I feel like I'm seeing parts of the stadium I'm not meant to see here. We can just, we can just go on an adventure. My, Mike really has gone all out here. There was a wedding going on, it looks like. So if you want to get married, you can do it. I guess there's a rule that everything does have to be blue and white for any kind of wedding agreements and arrangements at Hillsborough, which is kind of understandable. We are getting fancy now. A double box. Although these seats don't have arms. Have to pay more for that. I mean, I can't stress this enough. There are dots everywhere. I cannot do this justice. If we go anywhere, Mike's been here. Mike has been to every corner. He must be an expert. I'm not sure how much Hillsborough has actually changed since October 2013, so Wednesday fans, let me know. In terms of the actual stadium, I mean, it's blooming big. I don't feel like it's going to be very filled out now that they're in League 2 in our save game. I mean, I feel like I've done the full tour. Shout out to Mike. Going to give this, just for Mike's effort alone, stadium rating today, 7 out of 10. Look, it's been alleged that I don't give enough credit to the unsung heroes of away days. The people who actually go out there and take the pictures, be it Google, a bloke on a bike, or in this case, Mike. Shout out to you lot. Now, it might surprise some people to see me pick up the candle, another striking option, particularly as we had Tim at the club. Tim wasn't actually available for last game. Today, he's only available for 45 minutes. That is because he picked up a sports hernia and was out for five weeks with it. He's still a little bit injured with it even now. Um, really disappointed about this injury because I did want to give Tim a run before I went out and looked at maybe signing a striker in January, but my hand was kind of forced. I feel like it's better in Football Manager to have too many strikers than not enough. As for the rest of the team, Apaya is back from his injury Unfortunately, Johnny Arnott, who was on the bench previously, now he's got the flu, so I guess something's going around. Besides that, though, it is an unchanged starting 11 for this match. Hopefully, we can get off to a better start than we did against Bristol Rovers. This is a game that I cannot stress enough. We have to win if we want automatic promotion. 
I think a really frustrating thing this season so far has just been the fact that against the teams in and around us, we can't get wins. When it comes to the teams that we should be beating, we tend to beat them handsomely. And well, just because of this year there's not been a load of standout teams with that kind of form, we found ourselves in a good position. These are the kind of games that we need to start winning and not hitting the woodwork in like we have done immediately. Rivis with a free kick takes it. Well, I was going to say he took it quickly. He didn't take it quickly, but it's caught everyone out. Glad he is there. Carlton does make a really good stop, though. Half an hour played here. There's not been a load of chances, but it does feel like Sheffield Wednesday as the home team. Maybe, just maybe, edging this fixture out. They're having a little bit more of the ball. We are yet to have a shot on target, which is always cause for concern. And what we might have some defending to do here. Bruce Smith peels off his man and scores his first goal of the season. Of course, of course, first goal of the season against us. I'm going to go out on a limb and say they've probably signed him during the transfer window, as opposed to it actually being his first goal of the season, because that finish there, I mean, it looked like he knew what he was doing. Two minutes left to this half. If they get a second goal, it is going to be absolutely gutting. Neither team's created a load in this game, but they've created the two chances that count. I'm going to state the obvious here. We can't keep conceding two goals in, well, the first half and expecting to win. The defending was really bad there too. That is... <sighs> Is bad. I mean, it's half time. Sheffield Wednesday are two goals to the good. And whilst they might have way more quality than us on paper, the fact that we've not even had a shot on target is just, it, it's its abysmal. I'm, I'm throwing a water bottle. You've been terrible. Everyone looks stressed. Great. You know what? I'm going to try the thing that we discussed a few episodes ago. That does mean we're switching to the three at the back. I've not actually tested this in a game, but the players have been training with it. I'm keen to see how it can do for us. Of course, it is going to mean Beck gets to play his preferred wing-back position. On the far side, Charlton, slightly, slightly less certain about his role in all of this. Defensively, we've not been good enough in that half. Rogers, McGrath, Apaya, I'm keen to see how they get on. This is the kind of game now that I feel like we might as well use for a bit of experimentation. Robbie Yell looks furious in his danger of getting sent off. You know what? Tim, on you come. We're going to play him as a poacher rather than a target man. It might be premature to make three changes at halftime. I'm also bringing in Slomani. Uh, he is going to play as a deep line playmaker on support, which when you look at it, is a role that he should be really good at. Triple change made at halftime, complete change in system. Obviously, I'm aware there's probably going to come a point in the future where we can't just keep playing free strikers and expecting to win. I do feel like at this level, against weaker teams, we can do that. Of course, Sheffield Wednesday are a good team at this level, are one of the, the media's kind of top predicted teams. And what I will say is, whilst there's not been any highlights in this second half after 15 minutes until now, They've not had a shot on goal, I don't think, in those 15 minutes. So clearly defensively, it's looking a little bit better. Can we show something offensively? Tim has skied it. 20 minutes left here. I mean, we've not scored, but on the flip side, I, they've, they've not had a shot on target. I don't think they've had a shot at all in this half. We've been a way, way better team. And while Tim has hit the crossbar, we've hit the crossbar so much today. Is that four times we've hit the woodwork in two games? Am I allowed to be annoyed? I feel upset. Panny's not played particularly well here, so you know what? I'm going to bring in Ben AC at centre mid on attack, and Earthy is going to come off for Kelly, who I am just going to play in a slightly more attacking role because, well, despite how good we've been defensively in this second half, it it's still 2-0 Sheffield Wednesday, and we'll, we need two goals in the next 13 minutes. We might need a four goals if we want to win is 3-0. Why did I say anything? This was a really weird goal, wasn't it? The ball was whipped to the back post and then it just hits the woodwork, I think, or maybe the keeper saves it. And then the keeper, he, he's, he's forgotten where his goal is there. I mean, that probably is game set and match. We'll, we'll make the more attacking changes. It's probably all in vain. If we get a goal and draw the second half, I'll consider that some kind of moral victory. The two shots, by the way, that they had that led to that goal were their first two shots of the half. Maybe this three at the back system has a future. I probably shouldn't base it on a sample size of 35 minutes, but based on what we've seen here, I don't feel like it's been garbage. I probably shouldn't say that when there's a highlight going on, though. Although, we could be going forward here. Kelly, fresh off the bench, beats his man, and then baby legs it at the keeper. Why have I been shown that? What I will say is, it's very rare we don't score in a game. I've got a feeling... We're not going to score here. There's three minutes of added time. Is there any late action? No. And with that, for the first time in a very, very long time, 
or out of the automatic promotion spots. Now, what I will say to try and put a positive spin on things is, we've already played Tranmere twice, we've already played Bristol Rovers twice, and we've already played Sheffield Wednesday twice. So, the last 12 games of the season aren't as hard, I, I think. I've not actually checked. Let's go through these games together, okay? Next game, bottom of the table, Solihull Moors. We should be winning that one. Colchester in 16th. Dagenham are now in the bottom half of the table. Shrewsbury Town are in 7th. Wickham are in 8th. Stevenage in 19th. Grimsby Town in 11th. Boston are second from bottom. Rotherham feels like a big game because they are not far behind us. They're in 6th. They've been going through some bad form. Crew are then in 5th. And we've got Exeter and Swindon to end the year. I feel like the Rotherham United and Crew games are going to be rather big in our season, aren't they? Not 100% sure if that Rotherham and crew doubleheader is when we're going to be back next time. We'll see how the rest of the season plays out. With 12 games left, a whole lot can change. I knew that the games we came back for today were going to be difficult ones. Did I not want to see us win a game? I mean, I'll be honest, I'm absolutely gutted we've not managed to win a game, but that is the way the football manager plays out. We've got some easier games ahead. Let's try and get some momentum going. We've not won in our last four games in all competitions. Should I be more worried than I am? Now, you know what? We're going to remain calm. I will be back tomorrow to end the week. I hope you guys are excited for it. It should be big. Hopefully, it's going to be more positive at the end of it than it is today. I'm starting to worry. I'm starting to panic. I'll see you soon. Bye.